Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at manually programming a Valentine 1 using the control knob uh, right here on the radar detector. Uh, there's actually two ways of programming it. Number one is the old school way which works with every V1 ever produced and it's basically everything is done with this one single knob there. Basically pressing and holding it and tapping through the menus. Uh, the second way of doing it now is if you purchase a Bluetooth module you can actually pair the V1 with your phone and just check a couple boxes and just push all the settings right over Bluetooth. Uh, that way is much, much easier. I mean, everything is going to be labeled really easily. You just check a box and you hit, you know, send to the V1, and it just pushes all those settings right to the detector, and it makes it really, really easy to do. Uh, however, not everybody is using the V1 with a phone, and for those of you guys who are not doing that, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to actually manually program your V1. Now, this isn't the only video on YouTube which is showing you how to do this. Obviously, there's a couple other ones as well, and this is going to be my take on it. Uh, so the way it works, I'm going to be providing you with two links in the video description. Number one is going to be the link to uh, the programming information from Valentine's site, where they tell you what every single feature and option means, and what you should set it to to get you uh, the correct options that you want. Now, the settings here actually do change. Uh, the V1 has been around for a while, and so some of the newer detectors have features that some of the older ones don't, and this has kind of changed over time. And so as I actually walk you through the menu options, I'm going to post on the uh, video itself so you can see exactly what the options are. Uh, again, things do change between different models of the V1, and so I'll also post, depending on what uh, model version of the V1 you have, uh, what you should be setting it to here. Um, I'm also going to link you to a second PDF, which is going to be kind of a cheat sheet showing you, uh, you know, like a single page cheat sheet of what all the different things mean. Like what is option number one, number two, number three, and is arrow up on, arrow down, off, or you'll see. It'll make sense once we start going through it. But basically for reference material, you can go ahead and click on the two links I've got in the video description. Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and start uh, running through the V1 with the knob. Uh, you see I've got it turned on right now. First thing you want to do is just go ahead and start with the V1 turned off. And then normally what you do to go ahead and fire up the V1, you just turn the main knob on like this. You'll see it'll fire up, goes through its boot up sequence. And since I've got custom sweeps loaded, we've got this C there. You may have an A, an L, a U, you know, different settings here depending on what uh, mode you have it in. But right now I have a C. So that's the way you would normally boot up a V1. Now, in order to program it, we're going to want to do something a little bit differently. We're going to go ahead and turn it off. And instead of just cranking it on, we're going to press the button in, turn it on, and hold the button pressed in for a few seconds. So you'll see I've still got my finger on it. Press and hold it. So now you'll see all the lights are going to go ahead and light up here. What we'll do next is we're going to go ahead and tap the button one time. And what this is going to go ahead and do is tell us what version of the V1 that we currently have. Uh, you'll see right now I have a 3.8945. 3.8945. So it's going to cycle through the um, numbers like this. And this is the way that you can check what version of the V1 that you have. Uh, as of this time, uh, this is the current, you know, latest and greatest version, 3.8945. You may have this version, you may have an older one. And so again, uh, what I'm going to be referencing here may be different depending on if you have a different version of the V1, and uh, you'll see on the screen different checkboxes and info as far as what applies to you uh, if you have these features or not and what you should be doing. So we're going to go ahead and press this button here a second time, and this is going to go ahead and drop us now into the uh, menu options. And the way it's going to work here, you see how we have a 1? Uh, we're going to go ahead and cycle, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, 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 and then A, B, C, D, E. This is going to be changing to let us know uh, which option we're working with. And then the up and down is going to be uh, telling us whether it generally it's on or off. Uh, sometimes this kind of stuff does vary, but uh, you'll see how this works. So anyways, number one has to do with expand. So if you want expand on, you're going to have the arrow up. If you want expand off, you're going to have the arrow down. You'll see I have the arrow down right now, which means I have expand turned off. If I want to change that, I'm going to simply press and hold. For a couple seconds and then you'll see it's going to go ahead and shift to the arrow up like this and this is how you're going to actually change the settings we'll do it again i'll turn x band off and you'll see the arrow then goes down so that's actually how we're going to be changing the settings in order to go to the next item in the menu we're simply going to give it a quick press and you'll see now it goes to number two 
So number two is gonna be K-band. Uh, arrow up for K-band on, arrow down for K-band off. Uh, I have the arrow up, so you can see I've got K-band turned on. Uh, next, we're gonna go to number three, which is gonna be for KA band. Uh, I've got KA band turned on, and so the arrow is up. Finally, number four is gonna be for laser. Uh, you'll see, um, again, arrow up, laser's turned on. I currently have it turned off, just due to the V1's really sensitive, and it tends to false quite a bit to laser, and so I let my jammers actually handle all of the, uh, the laser detection slash jamming, and I don't bother with the V1. But if you want laser turned on, you'll have the, uh, the arrow turned up. Always depends on what you're looking for, of course. Next, uh, number five. So this is gonna be uh, the KA band ramp up. If the arrow is up, you're gonna get a normal ramp up as the signal goes from weak to strong. If you want a more aggressive, faster ramp up, uh, more responsive, you can put the arrow down and that'll get you the more uh, aggressive, more responsive KA band ramp up. It's gonna be uh, much faster at going to like a full tilt signal. Okay, next one is gonna be for KA guard. You'll see I've got arrow down, so it's currently turned off. Uh, in the V1, there is a special filter that filters out false alerts from other leaky radar detectors, such as Cobras. Those detectors emit a lot of junk, junk radar signals. It's not actually police radar. And uh, you can actually filter those false alerts out with a feature called KA guard. If you do that, it's gonna slow down your detector and it's gonna give you a uh, reduced range. And so it is gonna have a negative impact on performance, but you're gonna have uh, reduced false alerts. One thing that you can do is if you uh, pair your detector with a phone, this next feature does require a phone. You can't do this with just the V1. But if you pair it with your phone, you can enable custom sweeps and you can actually tell it which frequencies to scan and which ones not to scan on KA band. So what you could do is you could turn off KA guard like I have here, and then you just tell it don't bother scanning a lot of the frequencies where the radar detectors, uh, the leaky ones are going to leak at. So it's a great way to you know, have that good compromise of great performance and reduced false. And you just turn off those frequencies. Uh, Fortunately, because of the way the V1 works, you can't turn off the 33.6, 33.7, 33.8 gigahertz range, so you're still gonna get the false alerts there anyways, unfortunately. So you may wanna look into something like Yavi one and you know maybe additional filtering to help deal with it. But uh, basically what this is for, this is gonna be KA guard to help deal with the false alerts on KA band. So that's what that is. Next, uh, number seven. Okay, so this uh, you're gonna turn on or off. And what this is for is there's gonna be some features coming up. And uh, it's gonna basically control uh, more sophisticated K-band muting. And if you wanna go ahead and turn those features on, uh, you can, do, you can uh, do this. You'll see I've got it right now turned down. And on a uh, 3.8945, that means that uh, features B through F are all enabled. Uh, if you have an older version, 3.893 or older, um, it'll be features B through G. And so again, this is kind of where things start to change. Uh, versions B through G for 3.893 or older, and uh, options B through F for 3.894 or newer. So again, uh, if you want those features turned on, you're gonna have the arrow down, not up, down. And if you want those features turned off, you're gonna have the arrow up. So you'll see right now I've got the arrow down, so I have uh, the additional K-band muting stuff from B through F turned on. Next, we're gonna go to number eight. I've got it up. And so what this is for is gonna be um, controlling what happens when you press this button normally when you're driving. Now the way that it typically works is you press this button and it's gonna be muting your signal. Now, if you wanna actually have your quote unquote muted volume be controlled by this lever, that's the default option. And that's really handy so that you can have your uh, normal volume be here and then your muted volume be a second level, maybe quieter, but you can still hear it or you can have it totally you know, quiet like this if you want. So that's the default. If you want, you can flip the arrow down and that'll make it so that this automatically mutes the signal independent of what this is set to. And this is gonna be important in the next setting. But basically if you want it to always mute and be like truly mute the signal and just go quiet, you press that button independent of what that guy is set up for. Now why this is handy, go to the next one which is option A. And if you uh, enable this one, Currently the volume is uh, controlled by this. If you flip it down, the volume is gonna be controlled by this uh, external control lever right here. So control knob, control lever is what Valentine calls it. Whatever, the big main one and the secondary one is what, how I think of it, the mute lever. So if you wanna um, control your volume with this guy, you'd flip it down. If you wanna control the volume by this guy, flip it up. Okay, and uh, 
Oh, actually, that's um, sorry, that's the uh, muted volume, I believe. Are we on A? Yeah. So that's if you uh, mute it. If you want the muted volume to be here or the muted volume to be there, not the main volume, but the muted volume. So, got that. Okay. Next. Uh, okay, so we're going to be looking at B, C, and D. Uh, these three options, they're going to go together. Uh, think of B, C, and D as like one package kit. And uh, this is going to be controlling uh, some of the K-band muting. And what you can do is if you're working with these, you can have it so that uh, when you get a K-band signal, it's automatically going to be muted for a period of time. Uh, the signal is only going to alert if the signal is longer than whatever time period you specify, meaning let's say you set it to 10 seconds. Any K-band signals 10 seconds or less are going to stay muted. If you get a long duration K-band signal for 10 seconds or longer, after 10 seconds it's then going to begin audibly alerting. So this is a way to go ahead and just automatically mute any and every K-band signal uh, when you initially get it. And you can decide how long you want it to stay muted before it then begins alerting. Now B, C, and D are going to be there to let you program how long you want this. Uh, think of them like dip switches, you know, up and down, on and off, one and zero, however you want to think of it. But you're going to need uh, three individual arrows here to program this one. So looking at the chart here that I've got on the screen, I've got a 3.8945. And let's say that I'm going to want to mute it for uh, 10 seconds. Okay, the one, so it's going to be the top right option in the box, uh, the dark gray column there on the right hand side, the very top one, that's going to be for 10 seconds. Now, if with my version of the V1, I want to go ahead and mute all K-band signals uh, 10 seconds or less, I'm going to want B, C, and D, all those three arrows to be up. So I would change this to up, C, I would change it to up, and D, I would change it to up. So you noticed um, in this case, all three of them were pointed down, so let's see what that would be set to. Uh, if you take a look on the chart, you'll see B, C, and D. We've got down, down, down. So that's going to be the bottom row. All the way on the right-hand column, column, that's three. And so the way I have it programmed right now, uh, any K-band signals, uh, if I have this feature enabled, of course, are going to be automatically muted for three seconds. And then they will begin alerting after that if they're longer than three seconds. So that's what that one is for. And uh, again, this is not a factory default option. You do have to go in and enable this in, uh, what is this, option seven. Okay, so let's see what's next. We're going to go to E. All right, so E is going to tell it uh, if you want to actually unmute if a signal gets strong enough. So basically, if you have the arrow up, like I do have, it's going to say unmute a signal uh, once you get to four lights. Duh, 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 duh. Four uh, on the strength meter right there. Once it gets to four, go ahead and unmute the signal. Uh, if you want it to stay muted at four lights, you can go ahead and flip the arrow down. Uh, the next feature is going to be very, very similar. Uh, number F, uh, number F, letter F. Uh, same idea, except instead of at four dots, we're going to be working at six dots. And so uh, if you get to six dots on the strength meter out of eight, so about three quarter strength signal, at that point, do you want it to go ahead and uh, unmute? If you have the arrow up for F, you say yes. If you have the arrow down, it'll stay muted at six dots or six lights. Okay, good way to kind of just really, really keep everything quiet if you want and only alert to like really, really strong signals. That's the idea behind this one. Next, G. Okay, that's a cool looking G. All right, ooh, this is a good one. So if you want to automatically mute all K-band signals behind you, so if you got anything uh, rear arrow, this is a good way to go ahead and you know mute uh, stores after you pass them, um, blind spot cars that are behind you, whatever. I mean, generally, K-band is going to be more of a threat in the front. You can obviously still get tickets from somebody behind you shooting you, but if you like the option of uh, muting any K-band signals behind you, you would uh, set the G to down like I have here. Uh, if you want it to not automatically mute any and every K-band signal behind you, you'll have the arrow up. Let's see what's next. H. Okay, uh, KU band. So uh, KU band, it's like X, K, and KA. Um, it's used in a couple places overseas in Europe, I believe. It's not used here in the States. It's not coming here. Um, so if you're using the detector abroad in an area where KU band is turned on, you'll go ahead and turn uh, KU band on by flipping the arrow down. You'll see I have the arrow up, which means I have KU band turned off. Okay, next, J. Uh, oh, okay, so before we get to J, uh, there is an option on some of the older V1s. Like, let's see, what version is this? Uh, 
3.812 and 3.813, it looks like. Kind of hard to read. But uh, on those versions of the V1, there was an option here for a factory test to turn the, um, the factory test on and off. Uh, up is off, down is on. If you have one of those V1s, you'll have an extra option here for I, and you can uh, change that feature. Because my version of the V1 does not have that feature, we skip I and go straight to J. Okay, and uh, again, some of the older versions of the V1 before this feature was available isn't gonna have this, right? So again, it all varies depending on what version of the V1 that you have. So this is gonna be for pop mode. If you wanna turn pop detection on, uh, you'll do the arrow up. If you wanna turn pop detection off, you'll put the arrow down. You'll see I have the arrow down right here. Let's talk briefly about uh, pop detection on the V1 because it is different than uh, Escort and best Beltronics implementation of pop mode. It's different than Cobra's, it's different than Unidin, it's different, I mean, it's different than everybody. Uh, I've got two pop guns, the MPH B3, which is a 67 millisecond pop on KA band, and I've got the MPH Z35, which is a 16 millisecond on K band, much faster, different frequency. This feature has absolutely no effect, none whatsoever on pop detection. So I can turn pop mode on and off, and on both of the pop guns that I have, this feature has zero effect. Kind of interesting, right? Whereas it does on Escort and Beltronics. So let's briefly talk about why. Uh, 33.8 KA band uh, detection is like built into the V1 no matter what. You cannot turn that off. It automatically inserts uh, 33.8 pop suites uh, no matter what you do, even if you turn this off here. So that's always there. And that's kind of the issue I mentioned about with the uh, KA guard. You can't turn off those frequencies, so you'll still get false alerts. So uh, 33A detection on the V1 is great. Uh, you're going to get pop detection no matter what, even if you turn this feature off. Uh, 16 millisecond pop is very, very tough to detect. The V1 actually can't reliably pick it up. In fact, most detectors can. The only one I've seen it like can in any reliable form is the Stinger VIP. But fortunately, nobody uses that gun. It's very inaccurate. Uh, it's not legal to issue tickets. Uh, the gun is out of service. It's a poorly designed gun. I mean, it's it's kind of a one-trick pony, the Z35 and the Z25s. It can do the 16 millisecond pop, but it's just a bad gun otherwise. So anyways, don't worry about it. Uh, so as far as I can tell, uh, this has two real-world benefits. Number one, it can detect, uh, my guess, I, haven't, I don't have one of these guns, but a 67 millisecond K-band pop gun. If you have pop turned off, my guess is that it's going to be uh, able to detect that. Uh, those guns are not used here in the States, but they are used overseas. So uh, if that gun, if you have a 67 millisecond K-band pop gun, I've seen a couple of those, some handheld ones, for example, in use overseas, if you have those guns in use, you'll want to go ahead and enable this. Uh, the second thing, which for those of us here in the States, why this is actually, you know, practically more uh, relevant. If you turn this feature off, what it's going to do is it's going to slow down uh, K-band pop detection. I'd have to review the numbers, but it's like seven milliseconds or something in our testing that we found uh, that it slows down the K-band uh, detection of very, very brief signals. Now, whether this feature is on or off, the V1 is still wildly fast detecting very, very brief K-band shots. I mean, ridiculously, ridiculously good at catching these shots. So yes, it does slow down uh, you know, quick trigger detection on K-band, but it's still so good that really it makes no difference, practically speaking. It's more of like an academic technical difference, but it doesn't have much of a real world effect. Um, what it does have an effect on is uh, filtering out, oddly enough, some of the uh, blind spot falses of cars that have um, blind spot detection mechanisms. Uh, a lot of those operate on K-band, and some of them, like Audis, for example, if you turn uh, K-band pop detection off, it'll actually help filter out a lot of the blind spot falses uh, without having to enable uh, TMF or TMF2 or what they're now calling their jump K fighter. Uh, TMF is going to introduce about a half second delay on K band where if you turn off K band pop, you're looking at maybe 15 milliseconds, something like that. So it's very, very short. Long story short, you can turn off K band pop and you'll get reduced falsing from cars with blind spot monitoring systems without the degree of uh, penalty that you'll get with TMF or TMF2. So realistically, that's going to be the main benefit here, and that's why I actually turn it off. Uh, for those times that I'm not running uh, TMF2, their new Jump K Fighter, I do like having this off because I do get reduced false alerts from some cars like Audis. So at the end of the day, that's really what this is going to be for. It's either 67 millisecond K-band pop detection overseas or uh, reduced blind spot falsing, which is what we would use it here for in the States. So there you go. There's a look at that. Anyways, let's move on.
uh, U. Okay, so if you want to turn Euro mode on or off, uh, you can do that here. Um, I know despite the name, it's not necessarily even for uh, use over in Europe. Uh, you actually have to enable Euro mode enabled in order to push custom sweeps with a V1C. Um, what that means in Valentine speak. Uh, again, if you want to turn off certain KA band frequencies that are not scanned, uh, which is going to give you reduced false alerts, better performance, better reactivity, longer range, all that kind of stuff. If you want to actually push custom sweeps with a cell phone, you have to first enable Euro mode. And when you do that, instead of it being in A or big L or little L mode, it's going to switch to a U on the screen. Uh, big U if you have K band on, a little U if you have K band turned off. Uh, once you push your custom sweeps, you'll see uh, the letter C displayed right here on the screen, which is what I have it running as. And if I press and hold this button um, when it's operating, I turn off K band and the big C there would switch to a little C. Anyways, if you want those capabilities, you are going to have to turn uh, Euro mode on, which is why if you see here for the U, I have the arrow down, which means that Euro mode is turned on. Uh, I guess it would be more logical if they had, you know, up was on and off was down, but that's not the case, which is why it's really good to have this kind of a reference, because, you know, even if you memorize what the different letters and numbers mean, is up on, is down on, I don't know, it always varies, and so kind of like which one is the default is usually up, I think, that kind of stuff, but anyways, uh, let's see, okay, the next one is going to be Euro X-Band, so when you have it in Euro mode, I don't believe you can actually turn X-Band off. Uh, normally. The way you have to do it is uh, there's a second feature for turning X-Band on and off when you're in Euro mode, and they call it Euro X-Band. So if you want uh, X-Band off when you're in Euro mode, you'll have the arrow up, which is how I have it configured. If you want uh, X-Band turn on in Euro mode, you'll have the arrow turn or pointed down. Okay, and then uh, two last ones. Uh, ooh, okay, this is an important one. Uh, TMF. So as of, what version is that one there? Dark gray, that's what, 3.891 looks like? So for this, as of 3.891, they had a feature called TMF. Uh, this introduces a half second delay on K-band, and it was originally designed for uh, certain states on the highway, they had these K-band transmitters that actually use radar to track the flow of traffic. And just by using radar, they can, you know, see how much traffic is there, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, they do these half-second blasts of K-band radar. So as you're driving down the highway, you're going to, you know, every mile or so, you're going to keep getting blasted with K-band radar. So you get tons of false alerts. And so what a lot of uh, radar detector manufacturers have done is they've introduced a filter to filter those out. Uh, Escort calls it TSR, traffic sensor rejection. Uh, Whistler calls it TFSR, traffic filter sensor rejection, I believe. Um, in V1 terminology, they call it the TMF, the traffic monitor filter. A uh, little bit different implementation. Some of the filters are more aggressive than others and more effective than others. Uh, but for the V1, you're looking at about a half second delay on all K-band alerts. Any signals that are less than uh, half a second will get filtered out. You'll get no visual, no audio alert. Uh, if you turn the filter on, it will reduce your false alerts, but you have the potential of missing any brief signals. Uh, one of the benefits of this is it also really helps filter out a lot of uh, blind spot monitoring systems. This wasn't originally what uh, this feature was designed for, but it turned out to have this really beneficial effect where this is actually a great way of filtering out a lot of the blind spot monitoring systems. Now, uh, what V1 has done is as of version 3.894, they have now uh, improved TMF, and they originally called it TMF2, right? Second version of TMF, which then for marketing reasons, they renamed to the Junk K Fighter. In my testing, I found it was like three milliseconds slower or something. I don't know exactly how it works. It's almost identical to TMF. I mean, I've tested, you know, Escorts and stuff like Escort has a much longer delay for TSR than V1 does with TMF or TMF2. I don't know why this is the case, but for whatever reason, it's about a half second delay here, and it works very, very well. It's not totally perfect at filtering out all false alerts from all vehicles. There is no radar detector out there that can completely get rid of all false alerts from all vehicles that have blind spot monitoring systems. I wish they could. I wish it was the case, because that would be fantastic. But sadly, no detector has been able to do that yet. It's you know, easier said than done. Anyways, uh, if you want to have this filter turned on, you're going to have the arrow pointed down, which is what I've got here. If you want TMF turned off, you'll have the arrow up. Uh, 3.894 was when TMF2 came out, or their Junk K Fighter, and 3.8945 is the exact same thing, except by default the filter is turned on. 
3.894, filters turned off. 3.8945, filters turned on. Like, otherwise, same thing. So, there you go. And then finally, we're gonna go to L. So what this is for is, uh, this is gonna be the main display of the V1, and you do have an optional concealed display. Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, I actually have it mounted right on my dash, and you can mount it anywhere, of course, but it's basically a secondary display here, and I run this guy in dark mode so other people can't see it, generally, and I like uh, having on my dash just being able to see the V1. Really good so I can visually watch everything and maybe mute the alerts so it doesn't, you know, annoy the person sitting next to me or whatever, and I can still visually see everything. Or even if I got the top down, the music's playing, I can always see what's going on with the V1. So for me, I really, really love that. Now, uh, there's two versions of the concealed display. Uh, the current version has support for ESP. ESP is not the psychic stuff, but it's V1's technology needed to actually interface via Bluetooth to a phone. So that's why if you wanna have uh, support with the Bluetooth module, and pair it with their phone, you're gonna need a new enough V1, I think 3.891 or two, uh, I think 3.892 or newer, has support for ESP. If you have an older version of the V1, or specifically of the concealed display that does not have support for ESP, you're gonna to wanna to enable this, and you're gonna force uh, compatibility with a legacy pre-ESP concealed display. Uh, it is a little bit different. If you have a pre-ESP display, you're not gonna get, um, proper functionality with a Bluetooth module if you have that paired as well. And so if you are looking to do Bluetooth, uh, you're gonna have to upgrade your concealed display if you wanna use the two simultaneously. But again, this video is designed for people who are not necessarily using a, a Bluetooth module on a phone. You're programming everything here from the detector. And in those cases, if you're running it with a pre-ESP concealed display, but your V1 has ESP, you have an option here of uh, forcing compatibility with a pre-ESP legacy concealed display. And so if you want that feature, um, you'll force that functionality with the arrow down uh, because all my stuff, it's newer, it has support for ESP, I have the arrow turned up, which does not force any sort of compatibility with pre-ESP devices, so. Cool, uh, there we go. So that's a look at going through the menu options here on the V1. Um, yep, and then press it again, and it goes back to the main menu. If you wanna go back to, uh, you know, once you're done programming everything, what you do is you just simply turn it off and then once you're ready to go back in, you just fire it back up. So there you go. Uh, there's a look at programming the V1. Um, again, for those of you guys who have a Bluetooth module, do it that way. It's much, much easier rather than having to know, you know, one, two, three, A, B, C, what all that means. Uh, you got a label on a phone, you just check a box. Much easier and you just push everything at once. So uh, it's a much more convenient way. But for those of you guys who are running just the V1, uh, there is a walkthrough of not only how to program it, but also what the different features mean, and uh, you know which ones you should use depending on your situation, your preferences, all that good stuff. So yeah, I hope that's been helpful. Um, again, in the video description, I'm gonna be posting uh, reference information to Valentine's website, which is where I got uh, all these checkboxes and information about what all the different options mean. So if you wanna see that, I'm gonna link to that. I'm also gonna be referencing to a cheat sheet that a fellow forum member put together for some of the older and some of the newer V1s. It may or may not may or may not be valid for the V1 that you have, if you have a different version, but it's a really handy uh, one-page PDF to maybe keep on your phone so that you can just tell, oh, okay, um, let's see, I need to turn KA guard off. That's number six, and the arrow is up. And if I want KA guard uh, off, then I'm gonna have to change it down. If I want it on, turn it up. Because again, you can see sometimes on is up, sometimes on is down. And uh, again, just a cheat sheet to make it easier. You can keep it on your phone, you can print it out, whatever you like and that'll make it much easier to uh, change settings on the fly. So I'll have the links to both of those uh, reference guides down in the video description. If you guys have any questions, uh, you know, please feel free to go ahead and uh, leave some comments down below. Uh, otherwise, you know, have fun programming and uh, yeah, cool. Hope that's been helpful. I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.